kids and welcome to week four of Moses Rewind. So BCC kids, thank you for joining in this morning. We are in week four, as I've said, of Moses Rewind. We'll be looking at God parting the Red Sea and showing his power and glory to the people that he loves. So I'm looking forward to that. But before we do, I got a question for you. What is one of the most scariest things you've ever done? Let's hear it. Oh, that's scary. Yes. Wow. Okay. That's a lot. Okay. That's good. Okay. Thank you for sharing BCC Kids. We're going to jump into our morning now. Here we go. Here we go. Go this way. So each week we've been talking about ways to memorize scripture. And this week we're going to be talking about writing it out over and over again so it kind of stays in your mind. So let's just see an example. Here we go. Moses and the Red Sea. This is Moses, who was an Israelite born in Egypt in a time when Israelite boys were not supposed to live. Wait, huh? Moses, however, grew up in the palace of the Pharaoh, the very man who was enslaving the Israelite people. When Moses grew up, he made a big mistake and fled Egypt to live with the Midianites. But God called Moses back to Egypt to deliver his people with the help of his brother Aaron. The Pharaoh did not want to let God's people go, and God showed his power throughout all Egypt by sending plagues. Even with all the suffering, Pharaoh's heart stayed hard, and he would not let the people go. On the night of the last plague, Pharaoh woke up huh? and heard a great cry in Egypt. Oh, for there was not a house in Egypt where someone was not dead. Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and told him to be gone with the Israelites. So the Israelites immediately left Egypt and made their way for the promised land, taking with them many riches from Egypt. They took Joseph's bones as they had promised him many years before. God led them by a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day. God told Moses to have the people camp along the shore of the Red Sea. Okay, got it. We're stopping here. God told Moses that the Egyptians would come after them, but that God would show his glory and power through this. Pharaoh changed his mind and readied his army to take back the Israelites. The Egyptians found the Israelites camped along the shore of the sea. As Pharaoh and his armies came close, the Israelites panicked. They cried out to God and asked Moses, Why did you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? But Moses told the people, Don't be afraid. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. Then God said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the people to get moving. All right. As night came, the pillar of cloud became fire, and it went between the Israelites and the Egyptians. Then Moses raised his hand over the sea and God opened a path through the water with a strong wind. The wind blew all that night, turning the seabed into dry land. Come on, are you? 
So the people of Israel walked through the middle of the sea on dry ground, with walls of water on each side. Come on. Then the Egyptians chased the Israelites into the middle of the sea. But just before dawn, God looked down on the Egyptian army from the pillar of fire and cloud, and he threw their forces into total confusion. Let's get out of here, away from these Israelites. The Egyptians shouted, the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. When all the Israelites had reached the other side, God said to Moses, raise your hand over the sea again. Who got it? Moses raised his hand over the sea and the water rushed back into its usual place. The Egyptians tried to escape, but God swept them into the sea. That is how God rescued Israel from the hand of the Egyptians that day. When the people of Israel saw the mighty power that God had shown against the Egyptians, they were amazed. They put their faith in God and in his servant, Moses. You know what? It can be incredibly scary looking into the face of a situation, not knowing what we're supposed to do or how we're going to come out of it. You know, we have a lot of emotions around that. Sadness, anger, fear, anxiousness, and the list goes on and on. But you know what? It's okay to feel these ways, but God does not want us to be controlled by our feelings. Now, the Israelites, they were confused as to why God had brought them to the Red Sea. Only what appears to be leaving them trapped by the Egyptians. But we know how this story ends. God parted the Red Sea. God's ways are higher than our ways, and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. He knows exactly what he is doing and how he's going to bring it out for your good in the long run. So, you know what? We need to trust God that he will make a way and come through for us. It may not look sometimes what we expect, but he always does. <laughs> What's up everybody? My name is Caroline and this is Rewind. <laughs> you guys know the drill by now. Rewind is a show where we compile the best videos that YouTube has to offer and show them to you, our loyal viewers, because we love you. Now let's get started. Do you guys like scary movies? I absolutely hate them. But for some reason, I love watching people getting pranked on the internet. And that brings me to the title of today's game. Are you scared yet? I will subject myself to five of the best prank videos online and rate them on the scaredometer. You know what's up. A one is not so scary and a five is super scary. I think I just peed myself. Make sense? Let's do it. Okay, let's take it from the top. Video number one. Oh my goodness, this poor little boy. That bear just moved. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Look at that slow motion. That little kid's face was so intense. But I don't think a stuffed bear would scare me that much. So I'm gonna have to give it a two on the scaredo meter. What? You guys think I get scared easily? No, not at all. I'm sticking to my original score of two. All right, next video. Video number two. He had no idea that was coming. Look at his reaction in slow motion. Did someone call my name? <laughs> These videos are funny, but I really don't think I would be that scared if that happened to me. Come on, she just caught him off guard. <laughs> okay, fine, maybe I got a little scared. I'm gonna have to give it a two on the scared meter as well. That wasn't fair though. I have our next video. Oh no. Oh my gosh. No way. He's climbing on top of the bugs. Oh my gosh. <laughs> he just climbed on top of that thing. <laughs> he went into the freezer. That's how freaked out he was. Oh no. Oh no. No, 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 no. See, now that is actually something to be scared about. Man, I think I'm gonna have to give that one a four on the scared of later. 
Video number four. Oh no. no! Oh my goodness, poor little boy. He just went straight to the ground. Okay, so let me get this straight. A grandpa hid in his house with a fake sword with the lights off to scare his grandson? Yeah, that's pretty awesome. I'm gonna have to give that one a three. I better be nice to my grandpa. All right, next video, video number five. Why is everyone watching? What is going on? was not paying attention to that bush at all. Oh, these people have no idea what's about to happen. <laughs> that would have been me, for sure. <laughs> that was by far the scariest thing I've seen all day. I'm gonna have to give that a five on a scared of you. See, I do think things are scary. See, I'm not the only one who Haha, ha, so funny, you guys got me. <laughs> okay, so maybe getting scared isn't the most fun thing in the world, but it's always fun to watch other people get scared. It's easy to laugh at them because it isn't scary for us, but we get scared all the time in life and not just when a scary movie is on TV. Life is full of things that we're unsure about and those things can cause us to be afraid. But the Bible is full of stories that teach us how to respond when we're scared. Today, we're learning about when Moses led the Israelites out of slavery. The Israelites, God's chosen people, were enslaved by Pharaoh, the leader of Egypt. After God demonstrated his incredible power with 10 plagues, Pharaoh finally decided to let the Israelites leave Egypt. But before long, Pharaoh changed his mind. He gathered all of his horses and chariots and soldiers, and he chased after the Israelites. Around that time, Moses and everyone else arrived at the Red Sea. In the distance, they could see Pharaoh's army growing closer. They were trapped. The Israelites must have been terrified, but God was with them. He told Moses to raise his staff, and when he did that, God sent a strong wind that parted the water of the Red Sea, creating a path for the Israelites to cross. Once they made it to the other side, Moses once again raised his staff over his head and the waters of the Red Sea came crashing down on the Egyptian army. I don't know about you guys, but I would have been terrified if I saw the Egyptians coming. I probably would have been even more scared crossing the Red Sea with huge waves of water ready to crash down it any moment. But when it came down to it, the Israelites had faith in God in that moment. They were brave when it mattered most. Sometimes this kind of bravery can seem impossible to have ourselves. I get scared all the time over things that are so much smaller than what the Israelites encountered. It can be easy to see the Israelites as some people in a story who were totally different than us. But even if they lived in a very different time and place than us, we share one very important thing in common. We worship the same God. He cares for us just as much as he cared about the Israelites and he takes our fears just as seriously. When we get scared, it's important to remind ourselves that God loves us. On top of all the times that God has provided for us in our lives, we also have a whole Bible full of stories of times when God helped his people in moments of need. God wasn't surprised when the Pharaoh changed his mind and sent his army after the Israelites. This is God we're talking about. He had a whole plan right from the very beginning, including having the Israelites cross the Red Sea. But Moses and the Israelites didn't know God's plan. Moses had to go to God in prayer when he was scared, and the Israelites had to trust God as his plan was revealed to them. The next time you feel scared about anything, and I mean anything, remember that you can go to God with your fears. It's okay to be afraid. No fear is too small for God, but it's important that we share our fears with God in prayer. This will help us to trust in God more, and the more we trust in him, less afraid we'll be as we go through life. All right, guys, we're just about done here. We'll catch you back here next week for another episode of Rewind. Okay, BCC kids, well, that closes our morning. And of course, we always end with worship. So raise your hearts and your minds to the Lord as we sing together. I won't be afraid You are with me You are right beside me Every day Even when it feels like Everything's going wrong I can look up to you, God And find my strength
lost in 